The mining industry in India is a major economic activity which contributes significantly to the economy of India. The GDP contribution of the mining industry varies from 2.2% to 2.5% only but going by the GDP of the total industrial sector it contributes around 10% to 11%. Even mining done on small scale contributes 6% to the entire cost of mineral production. Indian mining industry provides job opportunities to around 700,000 individuals. As of 2012, India is the largest producer of sheet mica, the third largest producer of iron ore, and the fifth largest producer of bauxite in the world. India's metal and mining industry was estimated to be $106.4 billion in 2010. However, the mining in India is also infamous for human rights violations and environmental pollution. The industry has been hit by several high-profile mining scandals in recent times. Introduction The tradition of mining in the region is ancient and underwent modernization alongside the rest of the world as India has gained independence in 1947. The economic reforms of 1991 and the 1993 national mining policy further helped the growth of the mining sector. India's minerals range from both metallic and non-metallic types. The metallic minerals comprise ferrous and non-ferrous minerals, while the non-metallic minerals comprise mineral fuels, precious stones, among others, dr. Kalar holds that mining in India depends on over 3,100 mines, out of which over 550 are fuel mines, over 560 are mines for metals, and over 1970 are mines for extraction of nonmetals. The figure given by S. N. Padi is about 600 coal mines, 35 oil projects and 6,000 metalliferous mines of different sizes employing over 1 million persons on a daily average basis, both open cast mining and underground mining operations are carried out and drilling, pumping is undertaken for extracting liquid or gaseous fuels. The country produces and works with roughly 100 minerals, which are an important source for earning foreign exchange as well as satisfying domestic needs. India also exports iron ore, titanium, manganese, bauxite, granite, and imports cobalt, mercury, graphite etc. Unless controlled by other departments of the Government of India mineral resources of the country are surveyed by the Indian Ministry of Mines, which also regulates the manner in which these resources are used. The ministry oversees the various aspects of industrial mining in the country. Both the Geological Survey of India and the Indian Bureau of Mines are also controlled by the ministry. Natural gas, petroleum and atomic minerals are exempt from the various activities of the Indian Ministry of Mines. History Flint was known and exploited by the inhabitants of the Indus Valley Civilization by the 3rd millennium BCE. P. Biaji and M. Kremashi of Milan University discovered a number of Harappan quarries in archaeological excavations dating between 1985–1986. Biaggi describes the quarries. From the surface the quarries consisted of almost circular empty areas, representing the quarry pits, filled with aeolian sand, blown from the Thar desert dunes, and heaps of limestone block, deriving from the prehistoric mining activity. All around these structures flint workshops were noticed, represented by scatters of flint flakes and blades among which typical Harappan elongated blade cores and characteristic bullet cores with very narrow bladelet detachments. Between 1995 and 1998, accelerator mass spectrometry radiocarbon dating of Zyzyphus CF, Numularia charcoal found in the quarries has yielded evidence that the activity continued into 1870–1800 BCE minerals subsequently found mention in Indian literature. George Robert Rapp, on the subject of minerals mentioned in India's literature, holds that, Sanskrit texts mention the use of bitumen, rock salt, yellow orpiment, chalk, alum, bismuth, calamine, realgar, stibnite, saltpeter, cinnabar, arsenic, sulfur, yellow and red ochre, black sand, and red clay in prescriptions. Among the metals used were gold, silver, copper, mercury, iron, iron ores, pyrite, tin, and brass. Mercury appeared to have been the most frequently used, and is called by several names in the texts. No source for mercury or its ores has been located, leading to the suggestion that it may have been imported. 
Topic geographical distribution topic The distribution of minerals in the country is uneven and mineral density varies from region to region. D. R. Kalar identifies five mineral belts in the country, the Northeastern Peninsular Belt, Central Belt, Southern Belt, Southwestern Belt, and the Northwestern Belt. The details of the various geographical belts are given in the table below. India has yet to fully explore the mineral wealth within its marine territory, mountain ranges, and a few states e.g. Assam. Topic agencies involved in exploration topic in India systematic surveying prospecting and exploration for minerals is undertaken by the geological survey of india gsi central mine planning and design institute cmpdi oil and natural gas corporation ongc mineral exploration corporation limited mecl national mineral development corporation nmdc indian bureau of mines ibm bharat gold mines limited bgml hindustan Copper Limited HCL, National Aluminium Company Limited NALCO, and the Departments of Mining and Geology in various states. The Center for Techno-Economic Mineral Policy Options C -Tempo, is a think tank under the Ministry of Mines which looks at the national exploration policy. Topic minerals topic Along with 48.83% arable land, India has significant sources of coal fourth largest reserves in the world, bauxite, titanium ore, chromite, natural gas, diamonds, petroleum, and limestone. According to the 2008 Ministry of Mines estimates, India has stepped up its production to reach the second rank among the chromite producers of the world. Besides, India ranks third in production of coal and lignite, second in barites, fourth in iron ore, fifth in bauxite and crude steel, seventh in manganese ore, and eighth in aluminium. India accounts for 12% of the world's known and economically available thorium. It is the world's largest producer and exporter of mica, accounting for almost 60% of the net mica production in the world, which it exports to the United Kingdom, Japan, United States of America, etc. As one of the largest producers and exporters of iron ore in the world, its majority exports go to Japan, Korea, Europe, and the Middle East. Japan accounts for nearly three quarters of India's total iron ore exports. It also has one of the largest deposits of manganese in the world, and is a leading producer as well as exporter of manganese ore, which it exports to Japan, Europe, Sweden, Belgium, Norway, among other countries, and to a lesser extent, the United States of America. Topic production topic The net production of selected minerals in 2005-06 as per the production of selected minerals Ministry of Mines, Government of India is given in the table below. Topic exports topic The net exports selected of minerals in 2004-05 as per the exports of ores and minerals Ministry of Mines, Government of India is given in the table below. Topic legal and constitutional framework topic India is not a signatory to the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative EITI. But, on national scale, there are legal and constitutional framework to manage the mineral sector. The policy level guidelines for mineral sector is given by the National Mineral Policy of 2008. Mining operations are regulated under the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation MMDR Act of 1957. The state governments, as owners of minerals, grant mineral concessions and collect royalty, dead rent and fees as per the provisions of MMDR Act 1957. These revenues are held in the Consolidated Fund of State Government until the state legislature approves their use through budgetary processes. In a recent development, the Supreme Court has said that, "...ownership of minerals should be vested with the owner of the land and not with the government." The subject of mineral regulation and development occurs at S number 23 of the state list in the seventh schedule to the constitution. However, the constitution circumscribes this power by giving parliament the power under S no 54 of the central list in the seventh schedule to enact legislation and to this extent the states will be bound by the central legislation. The Mines and Mineral Development and Regulation Act 1957 is the main central legislation in force for the sector. The act was enacted when the Industrial Policy Resolution 1957 was the guiding policy for the sector, and thus was aimed primarily at providing a mineral concession regime in the context of the metal-making public sector undertakings. After the liberalization in 1991, a separate national mineral policy was promulgated in 1993 which set out the role of the private sector in exploration and mining and the MMDR Act was amended several times to provide for a reasonable concession regime to attract the private sector investment including FDI, into exploration and mining in accordance with NMP 1993. 
The Mines and Minerals Regulation and Development Act, 1957 was enacted so as to provide for the regulation of mines and development of minerals under the control of the Union. The Act has been amended in 1972, 1986, 1994 and 1999 in keeping with changes in the policy on mineral development. The Mines and Minerals Regulation and Development Amendment Act, 1999, inter alia, provides for a introduction of a new concept of reconnaissance operations distinct from prospecting, b delegation of powers to the state governments to grant mineral concessions for limestone, c granting of mineral concession in non-compact and non-contiguous areas, d liberalizing the maximum area limits for prospecting licenses and mining leases, e empowering the state governments to make rules to curb the illegal mining etc. Topic. Issues with mining Topic. One of the most challenging issues in India's mining sector is the lack of assessment of India's natural resources. A number of areas remain unexplored and the mineral resources in these areas are yet to be assessed. The distribution of minerals in the areas known as uneven and varies drastically from one region to another. India is also looking to follow the example set by England, Japan, and Italy to recycle and use scrap iron for ferrous industry. The first National Mineral Policy (NMP) was enunciated by the government in 1993 for liberalization of the mining sector. The National Mineral Policy 1993 aimed at encouraging the flow of private investment and introduction of state-of-the-art technology in exploration and mining. In the mid-term appraisal of the 10th five-year plan, it was observed that the main factors responsible for lack of success of the policy were procedural delays in the processing of applications for mineral concessions and the absence of adequate infrastructure in the mining areas. To go into the whole gamut of issues relating to the development of the mineral sector and suggest measures for improving the investment climate the mid-term appraisal had proposed the establishment of a high-level committee. Accordingly, the Government of India Planning Commission constituted a committee on the 14th of September 2005 under the chairmanship of Sri Anwarul Hoda, member Planning Commission. The committee made detailed recommendations on all of its terms of reference in December 2006 based on the recommendations of the high level committee in consultation with state governments. The government replaced the National Mineral Policy 1993 with a new National Mineral Policy on the 13th of March 2008. Under the British Raj a committee of experts formed in 1894 formulated regulations for mining safety and ensured regulated mining in India. The committee also passed the First Mines Act of 1901 which led to a substantial drop in mining related accidents. The accidents in mining are caused both by man-made and natural phenomenon, for example explosions and flooding. The main causes for incidents resulting in serious injury or death are roof fall, methane gas explosion, coal dust explosion, carbon monoxide poisoning, vehicular accidents, falling, slipping, and hauling related incidents. In recent decades, mining industry has been facing issues of large scale displacements, resistance of locals, as reported by the Indian journalist Aditi Roy Ghatak in the magazine D Plus C Development and Cooperation. Human rights issues like indentured labour, as reported by the list of goods produced by child labour labor or forced labor and environmental issues like pollution, corruption, deforestation and dangers to animal habitats. Sand mining Sand mining is a practice that is becoming an environmental issue in India. Environmentalists have raised public awareness of illegal sand mining in the states of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Goa of India. Conservation and Environmental NGO Awaz Foundation filed a public interest litigation in the Bombay High Court seeking a ban on mining activities along the Konkan coast. Awaz Foundation, in partnership with the Bombay Natural History Society also presented the issue of sand mining as a major international threat to coastal biodiversity at the Conference of Parties 11, Convention on Biological Diversity, Hyderabad in October 2012. D. K. Ravi, an Indian administrative service officer of the Karnataka state, who was well known for his tough crackdown on the rampant illegal sand mining in the Kolar district, was found dead at his residence in Bengaluru, on March 16, 2015. It is widely alleged that the death is not due to suicide but the handiwork of the mafia involved in land grabbing and sand mining. Topic. Corporate Social Responsibility Study 
Topic. Topic. Background. Topic. Mining plays an important role in Indian industry, which contributes about 3% of the GDP in 1990s, and about 2% of the GDP now. Goa, a state of India, has 1,000 million tons of iron ore reserves and thereby has a strong mining industry. It exports about 30 million tons of iron ore annually. In the early 21 century, the demand of iron ore from China increased in a dramatic speed. Accordingly, the export of iron ore from Goa increased. Meanwhile, Indian government loosened the regulation on iron ore trading. These aspects, along with other factors like spot contract, resulted in the doubled export of iron ore between 2005 and 2010. In order to maintain the sustainability of mining, Indian government set up a series of regulations included in Act of Parliament in 1987. According to Act of Parliament, mining companies had to obtain the lease for 20 years in maximum from the Indian government, otherwise, their mining behaviours were not allowed. <laughs> CSR and Mineral Foundation of Goa when it comes to the Corporate Social Responsibility CSR, Indian government encouraged companies to take discrete corporate social actions. According to Companies Act 2013 of India, every company was required to invest 2% of their net profit in social program annually. Discrete corporate social actions means corporate social actions are not a part of the core strategy in companies, so companies are more likely to take social actions by setting up their own foundation. Mineral Foundation of Goa MFG is a non-profit organization that founded by 16 mine operators on December 12, 2000. The main purpose of MFG is to implement their social responsibility by helping communities and residents near the mining area in various ways. Their most common take was to invest in social and environmental projects, such as environmental sustainability, healthcare and educational support. For instance, MFG totally invested 10 crore rupees in environmental sustainability project between 2000 and 2010. In some ways, they contributed a lot to the society through these projects, such as creating ponds, donating books and equipment to the schools. However, MFG was unwilling to give further support to maintain their results. On the other hand, farmers preferred to receive money from mining companies, whereas mining companies wanted to provide technical assistance. Topic. The ban Topic. In 2010, Shah Commission visited Goa, and soon they found several important facts that existed in Goa's mining industry. Some mining companies continued mining even if their leases were expired, some were mining outside the permissive mining area, some failed to maintain a required distance between overburden and irrigation canals. All aspects above resulted in the fact that the production of iron ore exceeded the allowable output by more than 15%. Based on these negative impacts caused by mining industry, the state government shut down all 90 iron ore mines in Goa. Later, the Supreme Court also gave a temporary ban on mining operations in Goa. Topic. Result and conclusion Topic. The ban on mining industry directly resulted in a huge loss on government revenue, which is up to Rs. 50,000 crores $8 billion. Furthermore, the mining ban also hit India's GDP in 2013 and 2014. It also caused social problems that people who lost their jobs were unwilling to take their former occupations, like fishing and farming. This study shows that when the core strategy conflicts with corporate social responsibility, the social benefits created by companies will not guarantee companies' normal operations. In Goa's case, even though some mining companies and organizations, like MFG, took corporate social actions, most of the mining companies are more profit-oriented. Due partially to the lack of government documents and supervision, mine operators became more opportunistic, in other words, companies tended to take the risk of doing illegal things and gain more profit. Moreover, the social actions may not sufficient. Despite the fact that the water quality was somewhat improved, the concentration of iron ore in water was still unacceptable in some period. Topic. See also. Topic. Copper production in India 
Diamond mining in India Topic. Footnotes Topic. Topic. Bibliography Topic. Annual Report 2007 Ministry of Mines, Government of India, National Informatics Centre. Biaggi, Paolo Quarries in Harappa. Encyclopedia of the History of Science, Technology, and Medicine in Non-Western Cultures Second Edition edited by Helene Selin, pp. 1856–1863 Springer, ISBN 978-1-4020-4559-2. Potty, S. N. Mine Safety in India Control of Accidents and Disasters in 21st Century, Mining in the 21st Century, Quo Vadis, edited by A. K. Goes etc., Taylor and Francis, ISBN 90-5809-274-7. Rapp, George Robert 2002, Archaeominerology, Springer, ISBN 3-540-42579-9. Kalar, D. R. 2006, Mineral Resources, India, A Comprehensive Geography, pp. 630-659, ASMITH Publishers, ISBN 81-272-2636-X. Yule, P. A. Hauptmann, A. Hughes M. The Copper Hordes of the Indian Subcontinent, Preliminaries for an Interpretation, Jarbuk des Ramisch Germanischen Zentralmuseums Mainz 36, 193-275, ISSN 0076-2741 http colon slash slash archive.ub.uni-heidelberg.de slash civifotic slash voltexte slash 2009 slash 509 slash lide TQ 1996, The Mineral Industry of India, United States Geological Survey. Find Indian mining-related information at a single place. Indian Mining Industry, News and Analysis. Resources on Mining, India Environment Portal. <laughs>